Hi kids! Do you know where I am right now? What can you see? There's a really tall tree, right? Now it's pretty amazing. Now do you know what what this tree is called? If you don't know, I'm gonna tell you later on. But here's the thing. It's amazing that this tree is so tall. You know, it has a height of 116 meters. So in our story today, we're gonna look at a person who was pretty phenomenal or great because what he did amazed Jesus. Okay, now let's get our Bibles. Now get your Bibles and open them to Matthew chapter 8 verse 5 to 13. So our story is again in Matthew chapter 8 verses 5 to 13. When Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Now, what's a centurion? Now, a centurion is a Ro Roman officer in their time who is in charge of about 100 people. That's equivalent to our modern day captain. So, that's a centurion. So let's go to our story again. So, in verse 6, Lord, he said, My servant lies at home, paralyzed, suffering terribly. Jesus said to him, Shall I come and heal him? Verse 8, The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. I tell this one, Go, and he goes. And that one come, and he comes. I say to my servant, Do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, Truly I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go, let it be done, just as you believe it would. And his servant was healed at that moment. So immediately his servant was healed. Right kids, so the faith of the centurion resulted to his servant getting or immediately getting healed. Instant. Jesus was very, was far away from the servant. The centurion and Jesus were far away from the servant. Yet when Jesus spoke and when the centurion be also believed, his servant was healed. And as we look into this centurion's faith, we can learn some lessons. So first lesson, faith involves humility before Jesus. So we can see it in Matthew chapter 8, verses 7 to 8. It says here, Jesus said to him, Shall I come and heal him? The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. The centurion was like saying, Lord, who am I that you would enter my roof? But just say the word and my servant will be healed. He had this amazing humility and faith. Now, what is humility? Now, humility is about low or small, like feeling that you are nothing compared to something. Okay? It is also thinking of yourself less. So let's go back to that tree a while ago. Let's zoom out and let's look at the tree. Right? It's so tall. So this tree is actually called Hyperion. So again, its height is 116 meters. And did you know that the average human or the height of a human is about 1.6 to 1.7 meters? So this tree is really tall as you can see. Okay. Now these things amazes us or it makes us feel like we're small. Like I am just like this. What am I compared to this tree? Or let's, let's say a, a, a mountain. A mountain is so tall. Oh, who are we compared to this mountain or the stars in the sky or the galaxy out there? We can say that uh, who are we compared to this? We feel little compared to these creations. And here's the thing kids, those are creations. Okay? If we're amazed by those creations, how much more the Creator? If we're amazed by these creations of God, then guess what? We will all, all the more be amazed of the greatness of God, right? So that's how the centurion felt, kids. He understood who he was before the Lord, before Jesus. He understood that Jesus, he understood that Jesus was so great 
that he was not worthy that Jesus would come inside his house. But yet he had faith, he still believed that his servant would be healed by simply asking God to heal his servant. That's really a great faith right there. Now, second lesson, faith understands the authority oh. of Jesus. So faith understands the authority of Jesus. Now in Matthew chapter 8, verse 9, it says here, For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one go, and he goes, and that one come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. So this centurion understands authority. Just like soldiers, right? You know soldiers? Soldiers obey the chain of, a chain of command, and they op- obey their superiors or people in authority over them. And because of this, they are, they are organized. So if a person has authority, he can command this person to do that, just like the centurion. So the centurion understands what it understood what it means to have authority and he also understood that Jesus had authority Jesus being God has a high authority that's why he knows when Jesus said go your servant is healed because Jesus has the highest authority he knew that indeed it will happen because again Jesus had authority so whatever Jesus says, it will be followed and it will really happen. And all that centurion needed to do was to believe in Jesus. So third lesson, faith amazes Jesus. As we can see in Matthew chapter 8, verse 10, when Jesus, when Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, Truly I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. Jesus was amazed by the faith of this servant. So in their time, and of course, even until now, we are still amazed by what Jesus did. So there's actually a girl, okay, we have a picture here, and this girl's name is Bella. So Bella knows or knows how to speak seven languages. Can you imagine? Okay, now I will let you guys guess. What do you think is the age of this girl? All right. Now, if you answered A, four years old, then you're right, okay? Can you just imagine, kids? This girl is four years old, but she can speak seven languages. And these languages are English, Russian, German, Spanish, French, Arabic, and Mandarin, or Chinese. This girl is so young, yet she can speak a lot of languages. And this amazes us. Can you just imagine the centurion's faith, which amazed Jesus, okay? And that's why it leads to our power truth. Power truth says here, having faith in God amazes him. Again, having faith in God amazes him. So now that we learned those things, let's try to practice them. Here's the first thing. Be humble. Because now that you understand who God is. Now kids, do you now understand how great Jesus is and how great God is? If you understand that, then the response we ought to have is humility before Him. For who are we compared to a very great and holy God? We are so sinful and God is so holy, so great. He even loves people like us. That's just really amazing. And He even answers our prayers and wants to have a relationship with us. So that's all the more the reason why we need to come before Him in humility. Now second, be expectant. Again, if you understand that Jesus has authority and God has the highest authority, then you know whatever God says is going to happen. It will be followed. Now let's go to our power verse. It says here in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, it says here, We must never stop looking to Jesus. He is the leader of our faith and He is the one who makes our faith complete. Jesus is the one who will make our faith complete. Faith is very important and faith requires us being dependent to God. Being dependent. This is also related to being humble. Okay? It's like saying, Lord, Lord, I can't do anything without you. That's how much important or that's how valuable God is to us. We can't do anything. We can't be alive without Him. And that's why it's all the more reason to be grateful about who and what God has done for us. And then also, Jesus is the perfect example 
of humility. Although he was God, God became man in Jesus. And he even lived the life we should have lived. And he died on the cross for our sins. Now going back to authority. God has the highest authority. And again, whatever he says, it will be followed and it will be obeyed and it will happen. So kids, what are your prayer requests? What are your prayer requests or what are you asking from God? If, if God says it will happen, then it will happen. If God says he's going to provide for your family, then he's going to provide provide for your family. If he says if he says he's going to heal heal you, then he will indeed heal you. If he says that he's going to protect you, then he's going to protect you. If he says that he forgives your sins, then indeed he forgives your sins. If he says that he loves you, then indeed God loves you. That's how amazing and that's how powerful and how loving God is towards us, towards his children. So that wraps up wraps up our lesson for today, kids. I hope you learned something, alright? Now let's go to our huddle time. Now our huddle time questions, it says here, First question, what have you learned from today's preaching? Second question, what is something you are believing and expecting from God? Right now, let's end this with a prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you, O Lord, for this day you have given us. Lord, thank you because indeed we can believe in you. And Lord, we acknowledge that without you, we are nothing, God. Lord, we are totally dependent on you. Lord, thank you for your love and thank you because what you say will indeed happen and you will indeed keep what you promise, God. You are indeed our, a promise keeper. Lord, thank you for who you are. Guide us, protect us each and every single day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Alright? So that's all for our word for today, kids. So see you guys again next week. Bye!